السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. I am Muaz Del Najman. I am Al Sharif Uday. And I am Ryan Nidasan. Our report is about the taxation under the Americans and taxation under the Commonwealth period. Let's start. Let's go. go. Assalamu alaikum. Today, I am going to discuss the taxation under the Americans. But before that, I will give you a brief explanation about what taxation is. Did you know that one of the reasons why does the government exists is because of taxes. We can finance our governmental activities through revenues and by that, it is important on our part to know the origin and the nature of our taxation system here in the Philippines. Now, what is taxation? Taxation refers to a compulsory or coercive money collection by levying authority, usually a government. It is also a means by which government finance their expenditure by imposing charges on its citizens and corporate entities. When we say compulsory or coercive, it is required by a law or rule. It is not voluntary nor optional. In other words, taxation is the practice of a government collecting money from its citizens to pay for public services. Meaning, kung walang taxation, there would be no public libraries, parks, bridges, schools, etc. The revenues or yung pera na galing sa tax, yun yung ginagamit to pay for our doctors, teachers, soldiers, and other government officials and personnel as well as for building um, hospitals, schools, roads, um, and other infrastructure like what I have said earlier. Now let's proceed to the taxation under the Americans. The Americans who acquired the Philippines aim to make the economy self-sufficient, an economy that is independent or able to function without the help or support from other countries. In order for them to do that, they run the government with the smallest possible sum of revenue and create surplus in the budget. From 1898 to 1903, the Americans follow the system of taxation ng Spaniards pero may notify lang nila. Nagkaroon ng few changes kasi masyadong naging mataas or overwhelming yung pag-tax ng Spaniards sa Filipinos before. Kaya sinasabing during the Spanish period, the poor farmers were heavily burdened because of the taxation system while yung mga mayayaman naman were being less burdened by it. Kaya rin nila minodify is because the taxation system that was introduced by the Spaniards were outdated na and regressive. During the American period, the military government suspended the contract for the sale of opium. Opium is a kind of drug. It is used as narcotic and in medicine naman, ginagamit siya as an analgesic or painkiller. Second one is lottery. Lottery is a form of gambling. And the third one is the main charges for coinage of money. Later on, the urbana or yung tinatawag na tax on the annual rental value of an urban real estate is napalitan siya at tinawag na land tax. Ang land tax is a tax payable annually by virtue of ownership of land. Nung naging land tax na siya is levied o itinapataw na siya both sa rural and the urban real estate. Ang Americans ang nag-introduce ng taxes regarding sa land and agriculture pero nahirapan silang gawin yun because the problem with land tax was that the land titling in the rural areas was very disorderly. Masyado siyang magulo kaya nahirapan silang sukatin yung mga lupa sa rural areas kasi nagkaroon din ng resistance yung mga tao sa Americans. Tax aviation was prevalent especially among the elites. So sa panahon ng mga Amerikano, naganap ang tax aviation kung saan ene-evade ng mga mayayaman yung taxes nila. Tinatakasan nila yung mga taxes sa dapat nilang bayaran. Ano nga ba ang tax aviation? Tax aviation is an illegal activity wherein yung isang tao or taxpayer avoids paying his or her taxes. And aviation of taxes are generally subject to criminal charges and substantial penalties. 
In short, pwede kang makulong if you intentionally avoid paying your taxes. The Internal Revenue Law of 1904 was passed as a reaction to the problem of collecting land tax and it prescribed 10 major sources of revenue. Number 1. License taxes on firms dealing in alcoholic beverages and tobacco. Number 2. Excise taxes on alcoholic beverages and tobacco products. Number 3. Taxes on banks and bankers. Number 4. Document stamp taxes. Number 5. The cedula. Number 6. Taxes on insurance and insurance companies. Number 7. Taxes on forest products. Number 8. Mining concessions. Number 9. Taxes on business and manufacturing. And number 10. Occupational licenses. Ang Americans din ang nag-introduce sa atin ng iba pang taxes like excise taxes. Yun yung napapaloob sa 10 major sources of revenue. Ang excise taxes, these are the taxes required on specific goods or services like uh, fuel, tobacco, cigarettes, and alcohol. Sa madaling salita, ipinapataw siya sa certain goods and services that are considered harmful or linked to specific um, health issues. Nakikita ang excise tax kung halimbawa bibili tayo ng wine. Ang excise tax ng wine dito sa Pilipinas is 50 pesos. For other fermented liquor naman, including the beer, ang excise tax niya is 35 pesos. Napapaloob din sa 10 major sources of revenue ang document stamp taxes and cedula. Ang document stamp taxes is an excise tax na ipinapataw sa documents, loan agreements, or papers evidencing the transfer or sale of an obligation, rights, and property. Ang cedula naman or community tax certificate is a document issued by the Philippine government to individuals and corporations upon payment of community tax. Ginagamit din siya when we are conducting transactions in various agencies and offices of the government. So yung mga taxes sa Internal Revenue Law of 1904 is wala sa taxation system ng Spaniards. Ito yung minodify ng Americans sa system ng Spaniards, which is for them improvement yun. Kasi diba gusto nila maging independent yung fund ng government natin through taxes. Noong 1907, pinayagan nila yung ibang provinces to double the fee for the cedula. Yun ay para masupport yung pagpapatayo ng buildings and maintenance ng roads. Tinax din nila yung import and export ng products for the same reason. Yung sa industry tax naman is nag sila ng taxing system for the business community kaya nagkaroon tayo ng sales tax. Ang industry tax is a tax on salaries, dividends, and profit. Ang sales tax naman is tax paid to a governing body for the sales of certain goods and services. Hello everyone! I'll be discussing to you the continuation of the topic taxation under the Americans and I will giving you the introductory for the taxations under the Commonwealth period. Noong 1913, naipasa ang Underwood Simmons Tariff Act na nagresulta sa pagkabawas ng kita ng pamahalaan. Ang buwis na naipataw sa pag-export o paglabas ng mga produkto gaya ng asukal, tabako, abaka at kopra ay tumaas. Sa paglipas ng panahon, ang pamahalaan ay naghanap ng iba't ibang paraan o pagkakakitaan ng buwis, ngunit ito ay hindi pa rin sapat para maiangat o maibalik sa dati ang kita nito. Now let's proceed to the topic taxation under the Commonwealth period. But before that, let's define what Commonwealth is. Did you know that Commonwealth is an independent country or community especially a democratic republic? It is also a traditional English term for a political community founded for the common good. And for other resources, the noun Commonwealth stands for public welfare, general good, or advantage. Upon the entry of the Commonwealth era or the Commonwealth period, the taxation in the Philippines became more firm and just. Moreover, other forms of taxes were increased like the income tax rates, surtax rate on net incomes, and other corporation taxes. The government also removed the system on cedula taxes. Noong 1939, ang government ng Commonwealth ay gumawa ng National Internal Revenue Code at ito ang mga sumusunod na major changes sa bagong tax system. 
Number 1, the normal tax of 3% and the surtax on income was replaced by a single tax at a progressive rate. Number 2, personal exemptions were reduced. Number 3, corporation income tax was slightly increased by introducing taxes on inherited states or gifts donated in the name of dead persons. Number 4, the cumulative sales tax was replaced by a single turnover tax of 10% on luxuries. Number 5, taxes on liquors, cigarettes, forestry products, and mining were increased. And number 6, dividends or dividends were made taxable. This taxation still caused some sectors to become unfair on the share of the tax burden. So in short, hindi nito pinadali ang buhay ng mga tao. Rather, mas binigyan nito ng opportunity ang iba to take advantage uh, sa mga lower class as they manage to maneuver the situation for their benefits. Therefore, uh, the tax system that introduced by the Americans remained uh, unfair. So, nagsasuffer pa rin yung mga taong nasa lower class dahil sa taxes o dahil sa binabayaran nila sa gobyerno. Ngunit yung mga taong nasa upper class naman is nakita pa nila itong opportunity to make themselves more richer. So, mababa lang yung tax para sa agriculture. But still, there are no incentives for the industrial investment para sa development nito. Then, during the World War II, the Japanese administration uh, continued this taxation system with the exemption of the Japanese armed forces. So during those times, the foreign trade na source of income nila before is nawala. So ang naging source of income na lang nila is yung amusements, manufactures, professions, and the business licenses. Nang lumala na yung war, ay mas naging mahirap na yung collection ng taxes o yung pagbibigay ng tao ng pera sa government. So, ang uh, extra income na lang ng gobyerno ay nanggagaling na lang sa mga benta ng uh, national sweepstakes at ng government bonds. Yung pag-spend ng Japanese military ay mas lumaki. And therefore, uh, they issued military notes para makover nila yung naging gasto nila sa gyera. And that ends our presentation today. We hope you learned something. And that's all. Thank you for watching. Bye! Bye.